So welcome, everybody. It is May 2022. It is the first Tuesday of May, and it is the plug-in roundup here on iThemes Training. It is the longest-running webinar series on uh, iThemes Training. We've been doing it for a long time now. I should have looked up the numbers. It's been a while. Uh, so we started a long time ago, and every month we bring a fun list of plugins to the um, – uh, for, that have been newly added to or updated in the WordPress plugin directory. Usually over the last 30 days, we uh, add some different things from time to time, but generally in the last 30 days, and we put them together in a list and uh, bring it to you folks here on this fine webinar. So glad you're here and let us get started. So we're going to begin today with a uh, neat little plugin that I find very handy. It is called Conflict Finder by WP Fix It. So let me ask you, how many times have you had a problem with a plugin and the very first email from tech support says what? What does it say? Always, always disable all your active plugins, right? And yes, I asked your developer. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. That was great. Uh, yeah, so but that's really good advice because Generally speaking, if it's a quality plugin and it, it's just not working for you, like you're probably the only one that's having that issue, right? So we need to figure out what the conflict is. Uh, and so disabling plugins is a very logical and wise first step. So uh, the challenge with that is how many of you, you go through and you disable, 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 and then you go to re-enable like, wait a minute, which plugins did I have active? And maybe I had some inactive plugins, which is not a best practice, but maybe I did. So, you know, how do I remember what I did? And by the way, that can take a little time checking a bunch of boxes. Anyway, Conflict Finder helps you deal with that whole situation. It is a great, like, if you're going to start troubleshooting a site, this is a great plugin. I just stick on there at least for the time when you're troubleshooting. Let me show you why. So let me go over to our plugins list, and I will give you the overview of this plugin. Uh, Conflict Finder. There it is. Okay. Activating Conflict Finder. Now that's going to give us a menu item somewhere. Oh, well. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Okay, so it's in two places. It adds the giant disable plugins button that I just looked right past. So don't look past the giant disable plugins button. So watch what happens here. The plugin developer support says disable all your plugins. Okay, one click. Done, except for Conflict Finder, which stays active, which is not a problem. All other plugins have been disabled. What's cool is this. You may have noticed before I disabled plugins that many plugins were active and many plugins were inactive. This plugin remembers which ones were active. So when I click Restore Plugins, boom, just that fast, the active ones are active and the inactive ones are inactive. Isn't that great? I think that's super cool. Now, here's the other thing. Watch this. Disable Plugins. Now, let's start one at a time activating plugins. Did that fix it? Nope. Let's activate another one. Did that fix it? Nope. Let's activate another. Okay. So now I figured out what it is. Even though some are active and some are not, so the state is a little different. Like, for example, neither of these plugins were active before. I'm going to hit restore plugins. And it's going to remember, like it left the ones on that I just activated, but it turned on all the others. So you can do this in pieces even. And it remembers what was active before you started this process. So I find this to be a pretty cool tool uh, to help with this whole debugging process. Now, it does give you something else as well. And that is, you notice up here in the top, there is an admin menu link for debug area. So let's click that. And right here in the debug area, uh, you have the ability to toggle on and off debug, debug, log, and script debug. Um, and uh, I, I say debug. If you're a developer, you say debug, apparently. That's every smart developer I know says debug, but I just can't say that. Um, anyway, so we'll turn on our WPT, uh, WP debug and debug log, et cetera. And look, we click debug logs. And oh, look, right there, we got all, like, we have things. Like, you can see, you get immediate access to your logs right here. So that's the other thing this tool does. I find it really great. It's not something I'd probably leave on every site all the time, but for troubleshooting, this one's really cool. So, uh, all right. Any other questions or comments on this one? This is a good one, right? Conflict Finder or Conflict Finder. 
<laughs> by WP Fix It. All right, so let's move on down the list to the next plugin on the list. Um, and that one is, well, we're actually into a, a, a group of uh, block editor plugins. So if you are starting to use block editor and play around with things, here's a few that you might find interesting. One is icon separator, which is a handy little thing uh, that lets you put an icon separator on your page. <laughs> you know, it's named on the nose, which is helpful. So let's uh, activate icon separator and uh, head over to that page really quickly. And let me just edit this page. Now you will notice that I have on this page already a nice little uh, block of text. And let's say right here between this column of text, uh, the two columns and the one column, I want to put something here that separates this. So let's add a block and icon separator. And there's our separator. So over here, we have some settings. And this is really nice, y'all. So icon settings, look here first. Let's say you have a custom SVG that you want to use as your icon. Well, you can simply take the text of that SVG file and paste it right here. And boom, your icon is there. Isn't that cool? I like that a lot. Uh, however, we are just going to use <clears throat> uh, the built-in icon collection here. And I'm just going to grab something. Oh, I don't know. Let's use this uh, dashboard icon. Insert icon. Okay, so there it is. It's teeny tiny. Oh, but look, underneath, we have some icon width settings. Two EMs, three EMs, or I can do a custom. We can make it 20 EMs or 320. That's really big. Let's make it 10. Or 10. Okay, that's still pretty big, but look at that. It's kind of cool, right? Let's make it three just to, you know. All right. And uh, icon spacing. So how much space is on either side of the icon by the border? One EM, two EM, make up your own EMs. That's kind of nice, right? Uh, oh, look, icon fill color. So let's make it blue. And notice it pulls in all the, the cadence color palette that's being used on the site. How about a stroke color? That's ugly. That's ugly. Let's clear that. Uh, but you have the ability to put a stroke on it if you would like. Uh, look, oh, now there's some separator settings. So how wide is the separator in comparison to the container that it's in? Is it three quarter width, half width, third, fourth, custom? That's kind of cool, right? We can add top and bottom margin. They can be linked or unlinked for how much margin we're giving uh, this icon block. And um, let's see here. Uh, oh, the line style. So do we want dots, dashes, whatever? How many pixels is the line? Look at that. You can do all sorts of things with this. And you can even set the color if you'd like. So this is a super, now granted, it's one block, okay? It's one plugin for one block. But this block has so many options. I find it super intuitive. And this is one of the, there are a lot of things I like about the block editor and this kind of live preview of what it looks like as you're changing all the settings is one of the things I really, really like about block editor. So there you go. Uh, question, where do you put the alt text or description for that icon? That is an excellent question. So it doesn't look like there is anything built in to do that. However, Look what it did. We pulled our icon out of the library. It dropped in SVG markup. So we could probably add it manually right here if we wanted to. And that would work. That's a great question. Dave, does it work in page builders? Nope. This is a block. So it uses the block editor. All right. Any other questions or comments for this one? Here's how it looks on the front end. It looks remarkably like what it looks like on the back end. Look at that. We need some bottom margin here. But there you go. All righty. All right, moving on to the next one is uh, Magazine Blocks by Block Art. So if you, um, if you are um, designing a site that has lots of content, particularly, oh, I don't know, a magazine site. <laughs> go figure. Uh, big blog, lots of content. Uh, these are a set of blocks I think you will find to be very helpful. So this is Magazine Blocks by Block Art. Let me activate this one. 
Now, these are content blocks. They're basically, I mean, in a nutshell, these are ways that posts can be arranged in an interesting way, okay? So um, there's several of these that I really like. So let me go back to, I have a page for this. I think it's just blank. It gives me a spot to do things. Okay, so uh, here there are five blocks. So there's featured posts, banner posts, grid, post list, and tab post. Now, many of these things you could do with cadence blocks. However, uh, one, the one thing that this is a little bit different is um, this really focuses in on post author and comments and categories. Because, you know, on a magazine or a big, a, a very content rich blog site, you've got a lot of taxonomy happening and you want to make that accessible to people. And you want to show who the author is and you want to lift comments up to the top. And this just does it out of the box in a beautiful way. So, for example, uh, let's just do featured posts to start. So what that's going to do is have one big post at the top and then a list of posts going down. So notice how it displays. We've got um, the author and the author's avatar there. We've got a link to the number of comments. We have the taxonomies here underneath. And all of these things are stylable on the side here. So it's pretty cool. I like this one a lot. Uh, let's look at another one. Banner posts are sort of the same way. It, it looks better on the front end, but it sort of arranges things in you know, one of these um, metro type block arrangements, kind of cool. Um, another one here is the grid, which is just a very simple grid, but it makes it full width right across back to back posts, looks better on the front end. Um, another one that I really like is the tab posts. So look at this, so latest and popular. So this is like how many comments and things. And so it's tabs that work like this. And what's really neat about this particular one is that you can add this uh, in a column. It, it looks really good, like in a half column on a page. So. Uh, not spend too much more time on this because there's nothing really extraordinary as far as functionality. This is just a great set of blocks if you have a magazine or big blog type site to quickly add content with the sort of things that a magazine or a big blog would like, taxonomy and author and that sort of thing. Pretty cool. All right, so that is Magazine Blocks by Block Art. Any other questions or comments on that one? Uh, Robin, yes, many of those things can be done with Cadence. This just, um, like you'd have to do some a little extra design. These are just kind of pre-done blocks. If I was already using Cadence blocks, I'm not sure I would use this plugin um, because you can do a lot of this out of the box with Cadence as well. All right, so let us move on to the next one. If you, you are using Block Editor, you want this plugin. Like this, I think, is a must-have for Block Editor users, and it's called Gutenberg Add New Post. This, in my opinion, should be wrapped into the block editor by default. Let's just go here and add a new page. And you'll notice immediately here at the top that there is a new button. Uh, well, did I activate the plugin? Yes, I did. Oh, you know what? I don't think I refreshed this page. And that's going to be a problem. Add a Hang on. Ah, there it is. Okay, so I have to start typing first. So once we actually get the auto draft, we get this new button up here. So uh, let's say we just created a page, whatever. Let's drop some Ipsum text in. Awesome. Publish. We've got our page. Great. Now, right here at the top, I've been having problems on WP Nathan today. It's been really slow. Anyway, right here is a quick button, add new page. Boom, we just get right into a new page. So it's a nice little... Um, it, it, it makes it, it's a lot quicker for the UI. Also, once we get here, there's a couple of things hidden here as well, which is uh, duplicate the page and delete the page permanently. So we could go into, for example, an existing page. Let's go into this icon separator page. This is weird. That button's not showing up. I wonder if we've got a conflict with some other. Bunch of 
plug into active, it probably shouldn't be. Well, isn't this weird? Well, it lets you duplicate the page or delete the page permanently right here from, it's going away. Something weird's happening on this site today, y'all. Weird, weird, weird. Uh, yeah, right, Joe. If there only we had a, something to help us find conflicts. I, this is weird. Normally that's down, something is, there's weirdness going on. And there's been things happening. Oh yeah, look, oof, wow. Many, many problems. Wow. I'm going to deactivate the Gutenberg plugin. This is why they say don't use Gutenberg on a live site. The plugin Gutenberg. No, nope, that didn't help either. Oof. Good grief. What is all of this? Okay, so something, yeah, it's, I, look at this. Something's going on here today. Just a couple errors. It's not, it's not, yeah, the, <laughs> demo the conflict plugin now. I don't know. I've had problems happening all day on WP Nathan, and I don't know what the deal is. And I'm going to blame Chris. That's what I'm going to do. Who knows? Um, Okay, so hopefully we can make it through the rest of this webinar. Um, anyway, I would suggest that you try this great little plugin called Gutenberg Add New Post on your site, and it probably will not break like it does on my site. Uh, it's really, it's not the icon one. I, I, I don't know. I deactivated it, right? Um, I don't know. Something is just weird. Weirdness is happening. This did not happen when I tested this only a few hours ago. I don't know. See, my W is even gone here. Something's going on on this site. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is live webinar disease. Okay. Anyway, uh, if you like the page builder, uh, the, the, the block editor, I would try this plugin. You'll like it uh, because it right here, duplicate page, delete permanently. It's all right there, and you can quick add a new, and it knows what post type you're in, so it'll add a new post, add a new custom post, and a post type, whatever. Okay, moving along to the next block editor uh, plugin, which he says with much trepidation. Uh, this one is screen reader text format. So if you are um, particularly um, looking for, uh, if you're particularly concerned about accessibility, like we all should be, then uh, there's a few things that you have to be aware of with screen readers. Now, uh, we, we are having a, uh, an event in the, at the end of June with Amber Hines at Equalize Digital, where we're talking all about accessibility. That's a premium event. It's a two-day, four-hour training all about accessibility. Uh, one of the things that screen readers um, can't read, for example, is strike-through text. And so that, that's one of the reasons this plugin was created. But it, this plugin, basically what it does, it gives you an interface in the block editor to create some text, even highlight some text in like a paragraph, for example, and mark that as screen reader only. So it hides that text from a typical desktop view, but for a screen reader, it, it reads the text so that it gives context to something, right? So if you have an image that needs to be explained uh, beyond what the caption does, or particularly like maybe you've got some strike through text, screen readers don't read strike through text, so you don't know. And so you could preface that strike through text saying, you know, the following text is, um, is uh, strike through. So let me just show you how this works. It's really cool. Um, if you are concerned about designing for accessibility, which I hope you are, this is a great little addition in the block editor. So let's edit screen reader text format and hope our editor doesn't blow up. Maybe time to uh, blow off WP Nathan and start over again. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to type the following text is strike through. Now, what I can do is highlight that text and from the context menu here, select screen reader only. Now it highlights this text and see it disappears here, but it's actually, or, or did it, did I just kill things? What just happened? Everything is broken. The world is broken. My goodness. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Whoa. Weirdness is occurring. 
All right. So it's there. And if you, as you, this is the, hmm. uh, all right. So let's look at it on the front end. See, it's not going to show up here. However, if you look at, there's a span here, the following text is strike through. So that's going to read on a screen reader, but it does hide from your desktop view. So it's, it's helpful. It's helpful. All right. Any questions on this one before I move on? I hope once we move out of some block editor plugins that that's where our conflicts lie and it starts to work. Okay, let's deactivate anything related to any of those things that we were just doing and hope that we no longer have problems. Okie dokie, moving right along. All right, the next one is sticky floating button. Sticky floating button. All right, so uh, there's a number of ways you could do this. And this plugin is one of them. You could do this with a cadence element that is fixed. You could do this with uh, your own little div and some CSS, but this makes it really easy for even a client to change what your sticky button looks like. And by sticky button, I mean, you know, a button that is stuck to like the bottom of a screen, like call now, uh, you know, click to WhatsApp us or whatever. So um, let's, uh, let's activate sticky floating button. And uh, a few things. It does create an unnecessary top-level menu, but, you know, there you have it. All right, so the default settings, let's just look at the site, and you'll see them. If I can go there. All right, look at there, sticky button right there. There it is. Just sticks to the bottom of the page. Works really well on mobile. And uh, so this would be great for, a like, a, a literally persistent call to action that's there throughout your website. Uh, you've seen things like this, right? Uh, and this is an easy way to do it. You literally just activate this plugin. This is what the text is going to say. Uh, this is the link the button goes to. They give you a couple of tips. If you want it to be click the call, you know, you add the TEL and your link. Da, 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 da. Um, where does the link go? Is it new window, same parent, or open the link document? Um, is the position of the button left, right, center, or is it full width? You can set your background and text colors. You can choose from a very limited number of system fonts. They did this. I don't know why they did this. They should have just picked up the theme font, but they didn't do that. Uh, you can set your sizes based on your screen, um, padding for the buttons. Uh, and, and this is really nice. You can exclude, like if you don't want this button to appear on certain pages or posts or whatever, you can add a comma separated list of uh, post or page ID. So it can't be the title. It's got to be the number, you know, comma separated list, and it will not appear on those pages. So that's really helpful. Uh, again, super simple. The reason I like that, again, you can do this a lot of different ways uh, and accomplish the same result. But what, the reason I like this one is it is so easy. Like a client could just log into the back area. Oh, sticky button, edit the text, edit, change, whatever, done, right? And it's just done and it works. So there you go. That is Sticky Button by Digimax. Any questions or comments on that one? Uh, Beth, so you can't just put it on one page, that listing all that. Yes, yes. They, they have excludes, not includes for this one. Uh, question, how to exclude pages? So no, the, what you would use, it says here, um, you have to use the paste or uh, the pa paste, page or post ID. So uh, in order to get the ID, you can do that a couple of different ways. Uh, just based in, in core WordPress, you kind of have to look down here at this little area and see this one says post equals 161. So that's the ID of that post. There's also a plugin called uh, show IDs from 99 robots. <clears throat> and let's see, well, there's a bunch of them actually now. Dr oh, Draft Press bought that one from 99 robots. If we activate that plugin and we go back to our post list, that will give you the IDs right here in a column. So if you're going to be doing this a lot, then do that. Yeah.
All right. So if you want to exclude, then what you're going to want, like, so for example, if you, if you were going to do something like this and you only wanted it to show up on certain pages, that's where I would create a cadence element, a, a fixed element. And that way you could say, I only want it on this page. Yeah. So this is probably not the best solution if you only want the button to appear on certain pages. This is really designed for a persistent button that's there on your whole site. Okay, any other questions or comments on that one? Okie dokie, moving down the list to an interesting little plugin that I have. Uh, it is, um, I had a couple problems with this one, but it's good enough that I wanted you to see it. Um, oh, question about the show IDs button. Hang on a second. Can't type. It's draft press. Here is the link. Nope. Uh, yeah, that's it. There is the link to the plugin right there. Okay, document engine. So do you have a website on which it would be helpful if people could click a button and have the contents of a page delivered to them as a PDF? Wouldn't that be good? For example, maybe you have a site that has a directory and you would like somebody to be able to print out a PDF of your directory list or Maybe it's a single entry, or you have a recipe site, or maybe it's a, a, a historical society, and you've got pages, big, you know, historical whatever page, and boom, hit the button and PDF, right? Lots of use cases for this, and Document Engine does it, and it's pretty simple to set up. There's a couple problems I found throughout, but uh, I will explain that in just a moment. So... Document engine, do, 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 document engine, and we have a document thing here. Okay, so it's going to put a button out there, and we're going to call it download PDF. That's great. What post types? Now, notice over here that it has picked up WooCommerce products and stuff in summary, which are two custom post types we have in this test site that were created by pods, and so it knows about that. Uh, and so I'm actually just going to have those show up on the stuff page. Um, what's going to happen? You have a couple of options. We can, uh, when you click download PDF, it can pop open the PDF in a new window, or it can just prompt a download. Now, I, uh, I usually like it just to pop the PDF open in a new tab. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, where's the button going to be before the content or after the content? Let's say before the content, let's do after the content. And is the button right, left, or centered? Uh, and let me just show you this so you can see what it looks like. So we have it on our stuff, custom post type. So let's take a look at what we've got there. And I don't remember what that was. What is my favorite WordCamp picture? There isn't one. I literally, I mean, this is something we set up during a webinar one day. But you can see right here is a download PDF button. I'm going to click that. And voila, look at that. It knows headings. It's got text. It's got the title and page numbers that are generated automatically. Isn't that cool? So I like that a lot. It's really helpful. And um, there are a few other options in this plugin as well. Uh, Heather, can it rely on CSS for styling? Why, yes, it can. I'm glad you asked. If you click the style, look, you can enter your own things, or you can say use the current theme CSS. So you can drop in your um, uh, own CSS. Barbara's asking, would a pop-up blocker stop that? Probably not because we're actually opening a new tab. It's doing the same thing as like on a link, target equals blank, where it would just opens a new tab. So it's, this is not a pop-up. It's opening a new tab. Uh, so this is the part you'd want to experiment with. I had some, it, this, like I can't, I'm not sure why the font's not changing here. This just will take some experimentation. I literally spent like five minutes on this plugin, getting used to seeing what's going on. Um, it definitely deserves some more uh, investigation. The other thing you can do is uh, deal with your headers and footers. So you can put common headers and footers, drop a logo in the header. Um, this doesn't work right now, but, but it could be this site also. 
So like when I inspect this, there is a console error that happens whenever I click this to browse out to find a graphic, but it may just be my site. It may just be WP Nathan is broke, broke. Uh, so try it on your site. It may work. I put in a, a support ticket for the plugin dev. Um, so do you, you want to show the post title, which we did right here? Do you want to show uh, page numbers? Yep. How about the header font size? We can set that. Do you want tags in the footer? You can add HTML here to generate your own custom footer for each page. Show the post title, page number, footer, font size. So you got a lot of control over what these things look like. You have some things about the page as well. Is the page horizontal or vertical? So do you want, you know, landscape or portrait? What font size is used? Um, you know, so you have a lot of options here. Pretty cool stuff. So that is Document Engine from Matrix Add-ons. Uh, if you have a site that would benefit from this, uh, you know, I kind of scraped the surface testing this one. You, you'll want to dig into it a little bit, but it appears to work very, very well. Uh, let's see, a few questions in the chat. Uh, Deb, there is a setting for photos, yes or no? So it works with photos. Um, like if we, let's just do this. Let's go to the button. Oh, there's something else. There's two other things this does that I forgot to mention. They also include a block that is a PDF viewer. So if you have a PDF, they've got their own block that will display that PDF on your page, which is cool. Uh, also, if you want to manually place the button, you, there's a short code to do that. So uh, with that being said, if I go back here to my, let's just enable page also for this to work. And if I go back to that page where I just was with the icon separator, let's view that one and oof, big icon. Now we have that. So there's a picture here, right? Let's download this as a PDF. Yep, see, pictures show up. Now notice what it didn't do was retain the columns, but that was a setting that I haven't played with yet. So it does retain the pictures that are in the text. Um, it it did not, when I tested it, pull in the featured image for a post, for example, that just that I'm sure it will do that. I just don't know how it, it deserves some further explanation. Uh, Christine, will it retain URLs or links? You might, you can probably put that in the footer stuff. Um, where are the settings? I've got too many windows open. Good grief. Footer. Uh, maybe what you could do. Um, that's weird. It seems like they'd have a, you know, add link to the page. You may have to actually generate some sort of short coder here to make the link appear, but it doesn't do that out of the box. You'd have to figure that out. Um, okay, so is this for the admin or the viewer to create that PDF or can you set this? So uh, Q, this is, um, it's on the front end of the site, right? So this would allow your user to click the button and have a PDF of the page. That's what, it, that's the point of the plugin. It's pretty cool. Let's see, is the PDF created with accessible content or as an image of the page content? So it is a, it's text, right? So this would be as, it, it's, it's just a standard text PDF. It's not an image. Uh, let's see, Stacy, do you think it would work on websites that don't let you right click and copy? Um, I think those two things are unrelated. Because uh, what this is going to do is pick up the content of the page and turn it into a PDF. Um, oh, Christine is saying if you have links in the content, that is, ooh, what did I just do? There we go. That is an excellent question. And I don't know the answer to that. Why don't we find out? Let's go back to a page and make a link shall we? Let's just make a link out of this. And just make it a hash to get a link. Update, view, and PDF. Ah, it retained the styling, but the link did not go through. So that's kind of a bummer. <clears throat> All right, uh, Co, can you customize the button style? Yes, you can. So here in the button settings, 
Uh, styling. Let's see. Uh, wait, no. Oh, you know what? You can't actually. This is it's. You could with CSS, but there's no interface in the plugin to do that. So what it's actually doing is it's picking up the the theme style for the button and using that, which is really the best thing to do so that your buttons look consistent. I would think. Elizabeth, what resolution will the PDF be created? I have no idea. You have to test that. So I got to move on just for sake of time. So there's, I see there's a lot of questions about this. You see the usefulness of this plugin. I would encourage everybody to download it and try it out. And if you like it, leave a great review for the author. Okay. Moving on down the list is RSWP Books Showcase. So does anybody have a book list on a website that you've created for yourself or a client? Maybe it's a list of books that they recommend, but they have affiliate links and those sorts of things, right? So this is a, that you can create this in a custom post type and, you know, create your single layout using your page builder or, you know, um, uh, or, or cadence element now that it will allow you to create templates for custom post types. You can do all that, but if, all, if what you need is a simple book list that has all the custom fields already set up for just about anything you'd want to care about with this book, then this is the plugin. It just, it's just going to work. Uh, so RS Books Showcase, let me activate that plugin. And we'll see a book right there. And I think I have a, yes, I added a sample book, which is full of Ipsum text. So the way this will work, you got your title of the book. You can type whatever you want about the book, maybe a book review or whatever. Uh, and now look, we have this block of custom fields for our book information. Uh, so we've got the name of the book, the published date, the publisher name, short description, country pages, all the things, all the numbers. Now there's a, but, a, uh, a buy button text and a button link. So you could put in, if you have an Amazon affiliate link, for example, you could put it there, your pricing and so forth. And uh, when we look at this, it looks pretty decent. Oh, you know what? I had this problem. When it, sometimes when you, um, when you activate a plugin that creates a custom post type like this one does, you frequently have to reset your permalinks. So if this happens to you, like we have this new custom post type books, you need to just reset your permalinks, which means changing them to plain and then back to post name. And then this will work. Boom. Okay, so there's our view, right? Nothing special about it. The colors don't match my site. So I'm going to want to go in with some CSS and tweak the colors. But I mean, look, it's a simple book review page. There's my title, my blurb. There's a buy button, pops open uh, uh, the, the buy link. We got our stuff right there. Yeah, I mean, short description and our review. It's all right there. And look, a sticky button at the bottom. <laughs> she want that too. So it's really a simple plugin. You could totally do this with a custom post type if you wanted to change. Um, you know, if you really wanted to make the display look different than this, I mean, it's what you see is what you get. If you don't like the way it displays, you got to make your own. That's fine. But if you just want something simple, like this could be up and running in five minutes versus taking a couple hours to build out a custom post type and a custom display for it. So Barney, will this work for real and eBooks? Sure. I mean, you're, you're uploading the image. I mean, you're, you can put whatever you want in here. It doesn't even have to be books necessarily. All these custom fields are geared toward books. But uh, yeah, I mean, you put the image in here. Uh, you can look here. It has a taxonomy for authors, which is cool. So you could link, uh, they'll link to each other. That's kind of nice. Um, I'm going to guess uh, there's, yeah, look, there's two taxonomies here. I didn't notice this earlier. There's book categories and book authors. So you'll have a taxonomy list of all the books that show up in the, that category or all the books this author created. So that's all built out, whether it's real books, eBooks, doesn't matter. Um, you know, you can link out to the purchase wherever you want it to go. So pretty cool plugin. Uh, functional right out of the box. You could build this yourself, but I mean, if it, it's a simple book display is all you need, this is great. Any more questions or comments about this one before we move on? Because I have a bevy, I say, a bevy of WooCommerce plugins to show you. If you are a WooCommerce person, you will like what I'm about to show you because there are very cool things to come. All right. The first of the WooCommerce plugins is product layouts for WooCommerce. Now, uh, here's the thing. One thing I do want to say is we scheduled, hmm, wait a minute, this webinar is, okay. If you haven't seen this yet, we scheduled 
May 18th. So it's about two weeks. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. Two weeks from tomorrow, Ben Rittner, the founder of Cadence is going to be with us talking all about the new Cadence shop kit, which is groundbreaking. I'm saying that like, I, it's pretty significant. It's a complete rewrite of the shop kit. It's not like it used to be. It can allow you to do many things like what this um, plugin I'm about to show you does. Uh, and so a lot of the stuff you'll be able to do with Cadence and ShopKit. If you're not using Cadence, then uh, this plugin is great. Um, this, this, let me give you the link. This is a free webinar for everybody. So if you want to register for that one, do it. It's going to be great. We've got already like 600 people signed up for that webinar. So uh, yeah, it's the first, first come, first serve, 500 seats. Once they're filled, they're gone. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a great webinar coming up on Cadence. Anyway, uh, so this plugin though, particularly if you're not using Cadence, is just unbelievable. Let me show you. First, we activate the plugin. We've learned that on Plugin Roundup. If you try to use the plugin before the plugin is active, it doesn't work. That's just my little word of wisdom to you. Oh, the register link is not working? Well, look at that. Okay, well, we'll get that fixed and I will uh, just give me like, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I will have that fixed within an hour after the webinar wraps up today. Uh, I think I know what happened and it was a change that somebody besides me made. So it was not my fault this time, this time. Uh, I can't email you. <laughs> it's like, just give it like, give me an hour after we wrap up and go look and it'll work, okay? Um, I think I know what happened there. Yes, I know. It says the event is over. Uh, but we will get that fixed. Just give it an hour. No, what, so uh, what happened was this webinar was scheduled previously and we changed it out for a cadence for a, um, another webinar instead. And I think they used that link before I don't, it, and they, they let this other link die. I, I don't know what happened. It was a mess. They, in other words, they, they rescheduled the event. They did not put the correct link back on this webinar when they did that. But I will make sure that is fixed. Just give me an hour after the webinar wraps up. Okay. All right. So product layouts for WooCommerce. Here we are. There is now a product layout menu item. Oh, Mike. Uh, Sarah. I think that's Sarah. <laughs> Everybody say hi to uh, Sarah in the chat. Oh, it's Mike. Hey, Mike. Nobody can see Mike but me because he's only talking to me. But he's, fi he's fixing it as we speak. So I'll continue to speak and Mike will fix the things. Uh, okay, so where we are now is product layouts for WooCommerce, as I regather my thoughts here. Uh, product layouts for WooCommerce lets you do some really cool things with product layouts for WooCommerce. So for example, here is their uh, basic new uh, styling here. Uh, and you've got some, let's see here. All right, let's just uh, create a new style, shall we? We'll call this one our test style. This one's going to blow you away. So here's our new style. And uh, so from the beginning, how many columns do we want in this view of products? One, two, three, four, seven, eight, 12. I mean, good grief. You can change how many columns you want. That's pretty cool. Uh, we can change our column gap right here. We can change our row gap. Uh, let's make it three columns just so you can see a row. We can change our row gap. Isn't that awesome? The way that previews, I really, really like that. Uh, so they also, uh, do we want to show the category or hide the category? Boom. Show the title, the rating. Boom. You can turn on and off all those things. Uh, do I want to show these little icons that pop up? I can turn those off if I want to. Uh, the product settings themselves, like what am I actually displaying? I can display categories. I can display recent best sellings, things that are on sale. Uh, and at the end of this, it's going to give us a short code we can put anywhere. Uh, if you do have an icon, you can have, you know, what is my add to cart icon? Um, if it's a group product, an external product, a variable product, you can change up all those icons right there. Um, we can get into style. So what needs to go here? Do we want it to be centered or to the right? Is there a border around this area or not? 
all the things that you'd want to do, you can do. It is super cool. So image styles, which size of an image is it going to be? Is there a border? Is there a radius? Like, let's make, let's make it round. Just that quick, right? Uh, do we, if we're showing categories, what do those look like? Change the typography, the font, the weight, all those things. You have control over basically everything. What the title looks like, what the ratings look like, what the price looks like. And uh, even here in the advanced area, you can change the background color of the grid. You can change border, got margins and paddings, all those things. So once now that we've built our beautiful product grid here, we can uh, grab our short code right there. So when, we can grab this short code, drop it on a page or post, and we're done. Super, super cool. All right, any other questions or comments on this one? It's a great plugin, isn't it? It's one of the best WooCommerce plugins I've seen. All right, next up in the list is another really cool WooCommerce plugin. So one of the most frequently missed opportunities is uh, the, the thank you page after you finish an, an order. You know, the customer has checked out, they're happy with you, they love your store, they bought something. What a great place to engage them with something else. And yet the thank you page is frequently not customized by people who do WooCommerce sites because it's a little difficult sometimes, right? I mean, do you know how to customize the thank you page right now? Maybe, maybe not. This gives you uh, a really easy interface using the customizer to tweak the WooCommerce thank you page. Let me show you how easy this is. Let's go in and activate this plugin. Uh, thank you page. There it is. And we go into the customizer. Now, this does take a moment to load up in the customizer. So just be aware of that. We click the thank you page and we're loading and we're loading again one more time. Give it a second. Now it's working. Okay. So we are now on the thank you page. And this is out of the box, right? This is how it just works out of the box. So thank you, first name. There's your order number. I can edit this, by the way. And I've got all, look at order. And it's got my little, uh, you know, merge tag here. And I've got all these other merge tags I can pull in. Um, I can, uh, you know, do I want to add a coupon code? I can do that. But look, like you've got this layout. There's a thank you message. There's a coupon code. There's an order confirmation. You can move these things around if you want. And it just shows up right here. This is super, super cool. Uh, you can even add additional areas if you want. Like I want to add a single row. Boom, there it is. And I want to add social icons. And uh, let's see, I need to edit those. And let me just put in a couple of hashtags. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So you can do all sorts of things without, yes, yeah, Stacy, instead of having to fool with the page template, uh, right here in the customizer. And let's say, you know, you want to edit the customer information. Boom. There it is. You can change all the things. You've got styling. You've got templating. You want to change everything. It's all done right here. It is so easy to use. It's ridiculous. So, you know, we want the social up at the top. Well, let's put the social up at the top. Boom. Right there. This plugin is fantastic. I've not seen anything like this. Uh, so that is the uh, thank you page customizer. Now, there are, <laughs> there are a few frowny faces on this one, okay? Uh, it creates a top-level menu item, just so you're aware. It does that. I'm not quite sure why, but it does because it uses the customizer. Uh, but there is a top-level menu item that is created. Thank you, Paige. I don't know why they did that. Also, it immediately, the first time you activate this, gives you two giant spam banners across the top. So just be aware of that. Also, it adds this animated bar. That, that, that star spins from time to time. And I don't know why, and it's really annoying to me. Um, so just, you know, you can dismiss this, but it's a principle of the matter. So this is a plugin that, while cool, takes advantage of the real estate that it has to use in your 
WordPress dashboard. So there you go. That is custom, uh, thank you page customizer. I still think it's a great plugin from Villa theme. Any other questions or comments on this one? Good stuff, right? All right, here's another one. Uh, just in a recent office hour, somebody had a question about uh, pricing dynamically for WooCommerce, like based on user role or quantities or that sort of thing. And I gave you the example that we've used before, which was discount rules for WooCommerce, which is great. It was Beth. That's right, Beth, it was your question. Uh, discount rules for WooCommerce, which is a great plugin. This one, y'all, is better. I think this might be the most fully featured pricing add-on that I've seen yet for WooCommerce. It is really, really, really good. So let's activate this one and I will show you what I mean. Live. Mesh. By the way, anybody else remember Microsoft Live Mesh? We're, we're going back 15 years. This was like early document syncing between two Windows computers, like two, early 2000s. Like I'm showing my age here. Anyway, Live Mesh was awesome. Barney remembers it. It was great. Like you could have files on your desktop in the Mesh folder and it would automatically synchronize over to your laptop. That like way before any cloud services. It was great. Anyway, Live Mesh. Okay, so we're skipping the freemiest thing. And uh, we're going to look at this new dynamic pricing for WooCommerce. So there's two approaches to this. You can do it per product or there's a global site store level, right? So we're gonna start at the store level, which is under WooCommerce, settings, and dynamic pricing. It just makes sense where they put things too, which is really helpful. So there are no dynamic pricing rules yet. Let's make one. So we're gonna call this webinar test. All right, so look at this. You can do it by the day of the week if you want to. On Mondays, we give a 10% discount, whatever. Uh, you can do it the time of the day, which particular product or variation or how much quantity or the price or the sales price or like, I only want this rule to apply to things in the test products category. That's what this is going to do. Okay. Um, and we're going to say, what's going to happen here? I want this to be uh, bulk pricing. So if, in, if somebody buys out of any products in the test products category, if they buy 10 to 20 products in that category, I'm going to give them a 10% discount. And if they buy 21 to 40, they're going to get a percentage discount of 20%, just like that. And you can keep stacking these things up. Isn't that great? This is really cool. And it is, uh, you have so many, like the, uh, the amount of things, amount of customizations that you can do to set these dynamic rules is really amazing. Look at this user role. Let's say you have a member site and there's a WooCommerce site there as well. And you want to give all your members automatically 10% off in the store. Watch this. Let's start that. So let's say user role is equal to um, customer, for what you, whatever your user role for your members are, right? We can say it's a simple adjustment and they're going to get a percentage discount of 20% off. Done, right? That's it. As long as they're logged in, they will get a 20% discount on everything they buy. Isn't that cool? Now, you could also say it only applies to products in the exclusive category. All members get 20% off of exclusive products. Isn't that great? Uh, Scott, do they see the retail price or the sales price? That's a great question. So it depends on how you set this up. By the way, hi, Scott. How's it going, man? Uh, you, this is how it shows up. So uh, does it show up as just the regular price or does it show up as a sale price? So if you say it's sale, then they see the standard WooCommerce badge with sale and the, the, the strikeout price and the sale price. Or it just shows up as the regular price for them. Uh, question, will the viewer see what the rules are while shopping? No. And let me, you would have to you know, go out and write those out. Yeah, this is a great plugin. This is why I said this may be the most fully featured pricing add-on that I've seen yet for WooCommerce. It's fantastic. All right, so you can just sort of imagine the possibilities here. Uh, and oh, by the way, just quickly, uh, this was the global level. You do have the ability to, at a product level, 
Oh, that one's variable. I don't want to get into that. Let me just find a simple product real fast. Downloadable kittens. Okay. Wow, long product description. Uh, let's see. Dynamic pricing. So right here, you can add pricing rules just for this product that will overrule your, your global rules for this product. So there you go. That is live mesh dynamic pricing for WooCommerce. Any questions or comments on this one? This is going to be a hard vote today, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now we come to the end, which I believe is Chris Malone's favorite plugin of the list and uh, has recently become very, very, very useful for us on the agency side. We use this one uh, to save a ton of work. And it is called Import, Export, XML, and other things by Smack Coders. Okay. So let us activate that. Oh, by the way, this is, if you've ever seen plugins, import, export, XML, CSV images to WordPress is the name of the plugin in the WordPress plugin directory. The plugin is actually called WP Ultimate CSV Importer Plugin. That's how it shows up here. The reason it's called this in the uh, WordPress plugin directory is that WordPress, uh, the plugin search uses search, out, search technology a la 1998 Alta Vista and Yahoo search, okay? Like you, it, keyword stuffing in plugin names is rewarded. It's just, it's mind numbing. So anyway, uh, that's why you see things like this showing up. Um, yeah, Alta Vista was my gift for you internet geeks such as myself. Anyway, this plugin is called WP Ultimate CSV Importer. Here's where this is helpful. Uh, let's just say that you have a list of locations that you want to import into WordPress to show up in custom post types. And the client gives you this in a CSV. Now, in the old days, you would have to copy and paste, sell by sell, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, publish, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, publish, right? It's just bleh. This is a super easy way to just get all that stuff into WordPress. Now, there is a companion plugin that lets you export, but we're just going to focus on the importer today. Uh, we're going to activate this, and I have a, a CSV set up somewhere, which I forgot. Oh, here it is, which I forgot to start open already, so Excel takes a minute to start. Uh, basically, this is going to be an import for my summaries custom post type. Now, summaries is a custom post type created by pods that has a title and four or five custom fields, right? There's a quote, there's an intro, an outro, title, and link. We did this for some webinar 8,000 years ago. And so I have this CSV that has three entries for this custom post type with data for each of those custom fields, right? So let us go through the very quick process of setting this up and watch how easy this is. We shall go to import. Uh, let's see, import. Ah, first I drag and drop my files. Yes, thank you for that. Drop the file. Boom, uploading, 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 done. Okay, where are we going to put this stuff? We're going to put it in the summary custom post type and hit continue. Okay, now it, where it gets interesting. I'm going to go over here to drag and drop mode because it's just easier. And these are my WordPress core fields, just all the things that posts have. First, I'm going to drag the title to there. Now, the rest of this stuff are just WordPress custom fields. Now, I will tell you, it does have a pods integration, but it's in the pro version. However, you can just use standard WordPress custom fields. I just need to know what the slug of those custom fields are. So I'm going to open up that pod really quickly. Summaries. And right there are all my custom fields. So it's quote, intro, outro, source title, and source link. I just have to put those bits of information in. So, whoops. Uh, all right, so I'm going to add a custom field. And it's going to be quote. So I'm going to put quote here, and the custom field is quote. Add another one. I'm going to drag intro here. Intro. Add a custom field. Drag outro. Now, all this came from the CSV. Source title, source link.
All right, all set up, ready, continue. We have some options to do images. I'm gonna pass that up now. That would take too long to demonstrate. And uh, what do we wanna do? Do we need to turn on maintenance mode? Nah, it's just gonna take a second. Handle duplicates, you can decide if it's a duplicate, what do you wanna do? It's got a lot of options. I'm just gonna start the import for sake of time. Done. We now go over to summaries and look, there they are. And all of the things are where they're supposed to be. Isn't that cool? This saved us so much time when we had to import. How many was it, Chris? Like a thousand? Yeah, like a thousand uh, location entries into a custom post type that we're using to display some things on a client build that we're working on. Uh, yeah, so that was major time saved. So that is WP Ultimate CSV Importer Plugin, also known as Import Export XML CSV Images to WordPress. <laughs> All right, any questions or comments on that one? Uh, John, would this importer exporter work for moving users and orders from old site to new site? No, it did not give us that option when we went to import, uh, or did it? Let's see. I don't think it does. If we, let me just drop something in here again. And no, uh, I don't see, no, you, neither users nor orders are one of the options. Any other questions on this one before we wrap this up? Beth, uh, doesn't integrate with ACF. Uh, so yes, just like I showed for pods. So if you're using ACF, you just want to find out what the slug of the custom field is. And ACF has a list just like this and drop that slug in just like I just did. Uh, the question is, what is the name of the exporter plugin? I've linked it right here in the handout. Uh, if you need the handout, let me just scroll back up the... should be able to click this link. And grab the handout. WP Ultimate Exporter. Okay. Anybody else on this one before we wrap up? All right. So thus ends the May 2022 plug-in roundup here on iThemes Training. And so we end up, as we always do, with the vote. One vote. One vote only, please. What was your favorite plugin of the roundup? Dynamic pricing, document, conflict, conflict, ultimate importer, live mesh, layouts, live mesh, customizer, import, export, conflict, icon. Oh, it's, this is. Mm. So we're going to have to look at the chat log for this one. <laughs> this was a uh, plugin rich month, was it not? A lot of great plugins this month. Uh, yeah. So there are probably five clear winners in this one. <laughs> Oh my, so we take these votes, they do count. Uh, next month, we come to the best of. So twice a year in June and in December, we do a best of. So we took we do a roll up of the previous six months, all the top votes from the six months previous, and we do a webinar just of those. Uh, and so that's coming up next month. That is on the schedule already. Uh, and uh, just make sure you head over to uh, the iThemes training site and you look at, upcoming webinars, and you'll see all those things. Uh, oh, let me tell you another webinar that has been on the schedule. If you haven't seen this yet, you absolutely want to register for this one. Um, how to clean up a hacked WordPress site. So Kathy Zant, who has deep, uh, deep experience in WordPress security, is going to be demonstrating how to clean up a site once it's been hacked. That is scheduled for one week from today at one o'clock. So if you haven't registered for this one, this is another going to be a very popular webinar. Uh, you want to get registered for that one for sure. It's going to be great. Uh, let's see. News Roundup is coming up. And then uh, we talked about the WooCommerce templating with the new ShopKit 2.0 that is just about to be released. And then uh, the premium event for this month is the SEO Masterclass. Lindsay Halsey is going to be back with us again talking about two very important parts of um, SEO, and that is, um, let me get that up and working here. 
yeah, backlinks uh, and as well as your local search. So uh, two very important parts of your SEO uh, following up from last month's webinar on SEO basics. So that is it. Thanks everybody for hanging out with me for uh, the last hour. And uh, we're going to wrap this up. The video and the chat log and the transcript will all be posted to this webinar replay as always. Uh, Q is asking about links to previous links to previous um, months. You just kind of, we don't, there's not one place where all these are held. There's been multiple requests for that over the years. We just don't have the bandwidth or personnel internally to create like a database of plugin roundup plugins. It would be really cool to do so. I actually own pluginroundup.com, uh, but there's not a spot. So you just kind of have to scroll back and find the last webinar and click on it and you can download the handout. That's all we got right now. Okay, y'all. Again, thanks for hanging out. I am back tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow with, uh, with uh, Stephanie Hudson, my friend. Stephanie Hudson will be with us talking about where are we here? All upcoming webinars. She's talking about outsourcing. So this is the webinar we had to postpone a couple of weeks ago because uh, of some health issues. And she's back with us talking about outsourcing. It's going to be a great webinar. She really knows what she's talking about. So we'll see you back tomorrow, one o'clock for outsourcing. Until then, have a great rest of the evening. See you back here tomorrow on iThemes Training, where we go further together.